Hello everyone and welcome to a new Web tutorial. In this video, we're going to do something very fun. We're going to do dynamic pricing on an NFT drop. So in this video, what we're going to build is a complete web free app in which you're going to be able to create your contract, upload all of your NFTs and give users the ability to mint your NFTs for a discount. So one NFT is going to be 0.25, two NFTs is going to be 0.5, but then three NFTs is going to be 0.6 and we're going to give a discount like the NFTs get cheaper. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to uh, thermal.com. We're going to click here, start building. Uh, this is going to bring us to our thermal dashboard. Here we're going to connect our wallet. And from here we can deploy a new contract. And the contract we're going to choose today is going to be uh, called Signature Drop. And Signature Drop is what allows us, give us like, this extra functionality in which we can do this dynamic pricing. So let's call this dynamic pricing. Um, I'm not going to give symbol, I'm not going to description, just very simple. And um, we're going to deploy on Girly, Ethereum uh, testnet. So if you don't know what that is, um, it's just a way for us to just not spend real funds when we are just testing contracts uh, and we're instead just use fake funds. Uh, and if you don't have Girly funds, you can head over to Paradigm Posset. And then on this one, you can connect your Twitter and then here they can send you tokens on from four different chains. Once you do that, head over here, we're gonna click deploy now, and this will deploy our contract to the blockchain. This is kind of the nice thing about Botherweb, is like directly when we interact with the Therweb dashboard, we interact directly with the blockchain. Like Therweb doesn't have any servers that you're interacting with and they're deploying for you. You directly interact with the blockchain, you deploy your contract and you own your contract. So we're gonna deploy this contract. Here we see like successfully being deployed. And here, see, like you need to send claim condition in order to use for you to claim your NFTs, and this is one way of doing it, right? This is kind of similar to my other video with token drop, in which we set uh, claim conditions. But in this case, we're going to do it differently. We're going to do it dynamically. So we're going to ignore this thing. What we're going to do? We're going to go to NFTs, and we're going to upload the NFTs that people are going to be able to claim here. So what we're going to do here is like we're going to click on batch upload. We're going to upload some NFTs that people will be able to claim. Um, and here I have uh, one folder with what's called shapes, and this has just like different NFTs, different shapes. I'm gonna leave in the description uh, here something to, to download if you just want to test, but otherwise you can use your generated NFTs uh, from any NFT generator or anything else you like. So I have these my shapes here, different colors, different shapes. I'm gonna click next and I'm gonna clear reveal upon me. This means like anyone can just claim these NFTs uh, and the moment they claim it, they're gonna be able to see uh, what they get. This, that's the difference if, we, if I would choose delay reveal, that in this case, in that case, I will need to reveal the NFTs for people to be able to see them. Uh, but the, and the benefit for, of that is people cannot snipe which one is gonna come next. But for this uh, testing purposes, we're just gonna reveal upon me. So we'll upload all our files to an, our NFT metadata to IPFS, which means it will live on a decentralized storage. Um, and the moment it ends and it finishes uploading. It lazy means it's NFTs to my signature drop contract. At this point, we are done with the dashboard. <laughs> and this, that's the cool thing, right? And from, from this point now, we're going to do everything else in code and it's going to be very easy. So first thing we're going to do, is going to be open a terminal. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to go to my Thermal photo. And here I'm going to do MPX Thermal Web at latest. So we always want the latest version of our, of our CLI. And here I'm going to do a create. And here it's going to give me two options. It's going to tell me, hey, do you want to create a contract? Do you want to create an app? In this case, uh, I already have my contract. It's one of our pre-builds. But, but in the case you didn't have a pre-build or you want to build your own contract, you will select contract here. Let's select app. And here I, I also get different options. I'm going to call it my dynamic pricing. And here I get a couple different options, Net.js, Create React App, or Byte. I'm going to go with Net.js, and I'm going to choose JavaScript. So this will download all the files of our template to my, my computer. And from that point, we can start working with code. So now the template has finished downloading. I'm going to just, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to open an, a couple of terminals here. That's kind of how I like to work. And here uh, we're going to just launch it. In my case, I'm using Yarn, but in this, if you're using NPM, we'll just run NPM run there instead. Here it opens on localhost 3000, so let's go there. And we can see that we have a connect wallet button. 
and this is super nice because from here I can already connect my wallet. It's super easy, right? And from here, I, the good thing is I can switch accounts to a different MetaMask account, or I can just connect with Disconnect, connect with a different provider like Coinbase Wallet, Wallet Connect, and it's super easy. It's already uh, built in in the template, and it's just one React component. We'll 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 check it now. So I'm gonna connect again to my original wallet, and let's go to the app. Uh, so the chain ID, first, we need to, first thing we need to do is go to underscore app.js and change the chain ID we're working on. In this case, we're working on Ungurly. And that's it. That's the only thing we need to change on the app.js. And we'll start working on our index.js component. So the moment we have here, let's, let's just do something else. So let's wrap my connect wallet in a div so I can wrap, I can add more stuff to it. Um, and what, what I want to do is like, okay, I want my NFT to be uh, claimable. Right to be mintable. So first thing I need to do is like I need to put an input on how many NFTs people want to want to claim. And for this one, same thing, very similar thing to what we did on the on the token drop example and token drop video, which is like we're gonna just do a state amount, set amount, and use a state of zero. And this is gonna be input time number and on change. We're gonna do E for the event and E and set amount to e dot target dot value and the value is going to be our amount and this is just basic input management into react and then we need a button and the last thing we need to do is import use state from react and the moment i have that and i have an input here like connect wallet <laughs> and i have an input but i need a button to claim my nfts so let's write our min function our min function is going to make a request to our backend server, which is going to be a serverless function in NetJS that handles the logic. And it's going to handle this logic of like, hey, if you mint one, it's going to be this price. If you mint two, it's going to be this other price, and so on. So, so what we're going to do is going to create an string function, and we're going to do con sign file, sign fail of requests. And it's going to be a fetch to our API. And we're going to call it signature, generic signature. Generic. Signature. It's going to be a post and it's going to have a body. And in the body, we're going to send two things. We're going to, we're going to send the amount, but also we're going to send the address of the connected wallet. So for that, I need to get the address. So we can do cons address, use address, and this comes from React. And this is the address of the connected wallet. So we're going to send these two things on our, on our request. And once uh, I, get, I get it back, I'm going to do consign payload, and I do await um, sign a payload request to JSON. And I don't need this second away. I shouldn't need it. Yep, that's good. And then we'll do a try catch. And we console error the error. Correct. And then what are we going to try to do? We're going to try to mint the NFT. So for that, we need, to, we need to get access to the contract. So let's get back for, to our dashboard for a second, and we'll get our address, the address of the contract from here. So we can copy the address, and let's um, get our contract. So for that, we can do cons contract. We're going to destructure the contract from the object we get back, and then we'll do use contract. And we also get this from React, from our React package. And here, we just pass the, we just pass the address. And then this uh, contract object has many different things. But in this case, we can do await contract. And we see we have a lot of different things here. What we're going to go is like, since we have a year 721, in this case, it's 721A, but it's still inside 721. Uh, we're going to do 721. Uh, and we're going to do signature. And then we're going to do signature and going to do uh, mini. And here we're going to pass the sign payload. And this is sign payload dot. And it's going to be the sign payload dot sign payload, but I, I, don't, I don't like that much how that looks. So let's just pass it once, but let's just structure it from here. And this is going to be the same code, but a little bit cleaner, in my opinion. I like, I like the destructuring of it. So I get, let's get the means, this mean function and let's create a button here that it's mint. And then on click, it's going to mint this at the NFTs that we have passed on the input, right? Because we are sending the amount here as the body of, of our request. So a couple more things we can do here. We can put a, a key a tag here. We do, let's do price. It's going to be 0.025 ETH, but 
and then let's, let's let's talk about a discount that if you mint three or more the price for each nft is gonna be 0 0.2 and this is kind of the idea of the video right because like normal price if you mean if you mean one or two nfts it's gonna be 0.25 per nft but if you want to mean three or more we're gonna charge you only 0.2 so let's encourage people to just mean three or more so let's see how that looks. This is just nice. It's a simple website. Um, but right now our button does, does, doesn't do anything because we don't have our API or serverless root uh, set up. So let's get into that. So we're going to create a folder inside pages that's called API. And inside this API folder, we need to create a file that is the same name as what we have put here. So it's going to be called generates signature.js. So here, I need to do a handler. So here I need to I need to I need to write a handler. First thing we need to do is to import the third web SDK from uh, our third web SDK, which is already installed on our template. So the first thing we need to do here is get our cons address and amount from the request of body. Copilot is trying to tell me stuff, but we're gonna ignore it. And then we need to instantiate your SDK. And that's not correct, Copilot. Stop trying to make my life harder than it is. Uh, and then we're going to do from private key. And this is from, we're going to do process to them, the private key. And then we're going to pass girly. And why do I need to do from private key? This is because we need a right SDK. If I would do just new third web SDK and we'll pass girly, that would become a just read only. But we need to generate the signature. So in that case, we cannot just do we cannot just do the read only SDK. So now we need to uh, get our contract again. So let's do contract, and this is um, await SDK get contract and pass the address again. This is the address of my contract, right? Correct. But first, let's let's do the logic for price. So price, we need to we want to do it if the amount is three or equals to three, right? We want to be two, but if it's different number, well, in this case, uh, one or two, it's gonna be 0.25 per NFT. So that's correct now. So now we need to do a try catch again because we need to check if anything's wrong. So console error is error, that's fine. But then on the try, we need to do the sign payload. So we need to pass the sign payload that we're sending back over to the front end. So the subcontract, ES1021, signature, that's very similar to what we had before. But here, the difference is that we're going to do generate. And in generate, we need to pass a couple of things. So who is this NFT going to? And it's going to be the address that we have passed on the um, request. Second thing is going to be price. This is going to be price per NFT. That's important. So that's what we set, have set it here. Price per NFT. And then the quantity, like how many is this person minting? And it's going to be the amount. So the amount is going to get multiplied for, uh, by the price. Um, and then basically, cons we can consider error on error, but also we, let's, let's return a, a status 500. Like, We're getting, we're consoling error here. That we're consoling, we're doing a console error, but also let's let's return an error state if there's, there's an error. So let's status 500. JSON error, error the message. Um, just the error. That's correct. Let's format. And then if everything goes correctly, let's pass the sign payload. And this is the same thing I was destructuring. So I could do it probably here. So we sign the same payload and then on the front end, we get the same payload. And then important thing, we need to export a handler. So export default handler. That's the whole code. The only thing we're missing right now is like, I don't have my private key in my project right now. And this is, uh, this is a big warning now. So this is the very important and you need to, yeah, you need to be careful, very careful here. When, whenever you do a stuff that needs your private keys, you need to be super, super careful to not 
uh, share those around. If anyone gets access to your private keys, you, you, will, you will lose access to all your funds and you will lose all your funds. So how to make this better? So we recommend, and I'm going to leave um, a link in the description uh, uh, to our portal on how on different providers we recommend to secure your private keys. But the most important thing, if you don't do that, or even if you do, uh, you need to use environmental variables like we're doing here and never commit those to GitHub. And also remember, private keys don't work on the front end. This works because this is an serverless, this is an API function. So anything you see, like something like Net Public or React App uh, for an event, uh, environmental variable, that's public and people will get access to those when they visit your, your front end. So make sure you don't put private keys either in GitHub or either in your, in your front end client face application. So we need a private key. So the way to do it here is we, will, we need to create a name. We need to put private key here, equal, and he will, you will need uh, to add your private key. I'm gonna do it off screen, of course. So I already added my private key to the .m, .m but you see here when this is green, this, this is this is very important. That doesn't happen, right? So I wanted to I wanted to have it there because we are. Um, ignoring some end local, which also will work, but maybe in this case, we're not ignoring .m. So make sure you're also ignoring .m. And, that, and you see here, when I do this and I add it to my git ignore, this gets grayed out, which means this will not get pushed to GitHub. And that's the most important thing. So you don't get your funds stolen. And with that being said, now my environmental uh, variables are updated. Uh, I will need to restart my server. So let's close this, let's close this. I, I restart my server and now it's time. Then let's, let's see what happens. So if I mean three or more, the price per GNFT is gonna be 0.2 ETH, but if I, normal price is gonna be 0.25. So let's, I'm connecting my wallet. Let's try mint one. So I'm getting sign pilot request is not a function. And what I see here is like, I forgot to await my fetch. So that's very important. Otherwise here, um, it's not gonna work. So that should work now. Let's try again. So if I mint one now, yeah, now I get a prompt from Metamask to mint my NFT. And it's 0.25 ETH, right? So let's try two. It should be 0.5 ETH, right? Because I'm still not getting the discount. So it should be, fuck, <laughs> it's not correct. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I don't know, maybe some of you already found it, but I realized I had a I had an error here because I wasn't parsing my request about it. And this is uh, something that can happen. Um, so this one, this was making so my address and amount was not being passed correctly. So so let's try now. This is the moment of truth. So let's try to mean one. Let's see what the price is. I will should get a prompt on MetaMask, and I'm getting a prompt, and it's gonna cost 0.25 girly to mint one. Okay, so let's try let's try minting two. So let's go minting two. And right now we we, we should get it for, for 0.5 because we're not getting a discount and that's and we see it there. But the cool thing about this one is now if I try to mint three, it's not gonna cost 0.75, it's gonna cost just 0 0.6, 0 0.6. I don't know why I said it like that. That's that was weird. But and let's see. Uh, and I try to mint three, and it's 0.6, and that's super cool because now if I try to mint five, it's gonna be one ETH. And, it, and you see how powerful this is. It's like you incentivize. You see here one ETH. 
incentivize people to to see to mint more, right? It's like, okay, you want to mint one, you want to mint two, that's fine. And you can do that. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but it's gonna work. You can also do it this other way, which is like, if you mint three or more, it's gonna I'm gonna give you a discount. And, and you see how easy it was. Like we built this in like I don't know how like 20 minutes. Um, and it's super powerful. Um, you just need the art that you have for your project. You just upload it to Terra Dashboard, and that's basically it. It's just like you see how it's was super easy. Like we have 40 lines of code and here like 27 lines of code. So super easy to do, right? I hope you enjoyed this. Like if you want to see other use cases of signature minting, please leave, leave in the comments. So we also have some other videos coming, like write your own smart contract in which you can make your first NFT for free, but the other ones paid. So, so if we get to 50 likes, I, I, I'll make it happen sooner than later. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope if you do, if you did, please subscribe. And we're gonna be uploading three to five videos per week on travel tutorials and tutorials on Web3. We're gonna teach you about Web3. We're gonna show you how to build stuff in Web3. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe. We have more than 30,000 developers there just hanging out. It's very fun. So I'll, I'll wait for you there. Um, yeah. See you on the next video.